You know, barbecue is really familial, right? A lot of us have learned from our siblings, our parents, our grandparents. It's kind of like passed on knowledge. And one of the coolest things is, is that I got into this by an absolute fluke. I judged the Canadian Open in 2006, and three days later, bought my first smoker thingy. <laughs> That's what I called it. Since then, I've owned 65 barbecues. I've competed nationally. I've competed all around the world. I've won quite a few titles and uh, overall established an entire career in barbecue. So for competition barbecuers, we actually go off of very specific, very specific muscles on pork butts. We go in for different muscles because we want different textural components and that's really important. So on a pork butt, you've of course got your fat cap. It protects the bottom of the pork butt. You have of course an end here that doesn't have a muscle uh, bone sticking out. It's just kind of coated with a lot of meat and a lot of kind of hard fat. You have one end here, it's got a little piece of bone and then there's all these lovely little pockets right around the side. One of the things I love about these is that they're typically very highly marbled and of course marbling means flavor. All that flavor adds up to a whole lot of barbecue goodness. Go over to the other side, you've got the flatter longer bone and then there's a lovely muscle, it's almost like teardrop shaped, it's right under there. One of the key things for me is this is actually one of the muscles that I go after regularly. But the biggest and baddest of them all, the one that pays you the money, is this one on this side here. This is commonly referred to as the money muscle. And this is something that we trim out and actually we do medallion cuts because once it's cooked properly, you can actually almost cut it like a pork loin or a pork tenderloin, get these beautiful medallions out of there, richly covered in that mahogany bark from the grill. And honestly, they're just delicious. First thing we're gonna do, and you've got it up standing here, as you can see on the table. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna trim back the fat cap about an inch and a half. So basically, I'm gonna pull the fat cap away from the money muscle, taking some nice cuts with it, okay? And as you can see, we're just pulling it away from the money muscle. So we're gonna cut that piece of the fat cap off. As you can see, it's solid white fat. It's not, once again, not gonna render into the meat. So you can discard that, or of course, keep it and grind it for sausages. So what you want to do is you want to just take your knife and you want to just follow along the meat line, okay? And this is really careful. You want to follow it just down and you want to trim it out so that we can actually kind of see more of like a tenderloin or a loin, okay? So you want to do this not in one big like scoop out, okay? You want to do this in a couple of layers. And this is for competition style because our whole focus at this point is getting a really good money muscle, okay? And really great chunks off of this. And as you can see now, We've got a much nicer line. We've got a, a development of an entire muscle on that side. We still have a little bit of fat in here, so we're gonna come through with our knife again, okay? We're gonna do a little bit of a trimming job here. You don't have to get it all, it's fairly soft fat, but you wanna get it so that we can really, really build up that bark. And that's about as much as we can take off that side. So discard that, and now we're gonna work on the other side of this money muscle. So that is on the fat cap bottom part. We've now taken off as much fat as we want to, now we want to flip it over. Couple things in here. There is actually a vein in here that has a lot of blood, okay? And it starts up here at this end here and it travels all the way down. Now here's the thing. In reality, if you're at home and you're just making pulled pork, it doesn't matter. But when you're in competition mode, what can happen is that the blood or any of the myoglobin that's still in that vein can turn very gray. Might be off-putting to the judges. So what we do is we take our knife, we're gonna get rid of that fat, and in the process, you're actually gonna see the bloodline right there, okay? It's always in the same exact location on every pork butt, right above the money muscle. So we wanna extrapolate it, get it out of there, okay? Because we don't wanna take the chance that it is going to turn all gray and cut it out. Now, once we've got that done, that bloodline is gone and that's an important thing okay then once again we're going to focus on shaping this money muscle we've got a section up here that's got some hard it's almost like a membrane fat and a silver skin we're going to take our knife and we're just going to carefully get rid of that pulling that back away from the money muscle just like that there's the top end as you guys can see the top end of that bloodline we're going to go with the tip of our knife just the tip and we're going to take that out So we've trimmed the majority of the bloodline from the top of the money muscle. We're going to dig in a little further though, because up here at the top, as you can see, we've got a little other, you know, kind of like a cluster going on up here. So grab your knife once again, trim out that section. And once you do that, you're going to pull back some of that fat from the money muscle. 
Now the next thing we're going to do, while my hand is still holding this, I'm going to turn this pork butt out so you guys can see. On a pork butt, we have the majority of the muscles, they lay horizontal. So the ones that we like to go in a competition turn and box are the horizontal laying muscles. And that's very important. This lays horizontal. A lot of these portions lay horizontal. Some of those bottom parts lay horizontal. However, the top section of a pork butt, as you can see, the striations of fat, everything in this center section actually lays vertical. We never want to turn it in, but you want to trim it out so it's out of the way. So you're actually going to grab it and trim it all the way back because you don't want to concentrate on stuff you don't need to worry about when it's a competition box. Remember, this isn't home barbecue. This is a competition cut. Use it for sausage, chop it up fine, throw it in for some fajitas, but we don't want to turn it in. Pulling it back away from the money muscle, getting rid of the excess that we don't need to worry about. Once again, this is a couple of pounds worth. And that's why it's important to start with a really large butt first because we're going to trim off maybe two, maybe three, maybe even four pounds of trim from the pork butt. So now that we've got that top section, you can really see where the money muscle is, but we're still going to trim it out a little bit more. See, it takes a while to trim this out. We've got some stuff here on the top that if we don't trim it out, make it neat, it's actually going to crumble a little bit as we cook it. So we want to clean it up. So once again, lay your knife nice and flat against that money muscle top. We're going to trim it back and if you've got any little loose parts like this trim them out because they're not going to be usable and now as you can see the money muscle is fully exposed and that's what pays the money okay this whole section here now looks like a total pork loin and that's really important so we've trimmed out the bottom we've trimmed out the top we've gotten rid of the bloodline and now we can deal with the rest of the pork butt and all of this stuff so on this end section here, we've got a really hard chunk of fat. You want to clean it up. So I like to take a nice clean cut all the way straight down. And as you can see, this one has a lot of fat on it. Um, sometimes we try to harvest that muscle in there. This one's not looking so good. That muscle right there might be good a little farther down. It's really succulent meat because it's sandwiched between all of that fat. So now let's concentrate on cleaning up this top section here. Um, we've got another blood burst in here. We've got a lot of really loose, malleable fat. The problem is, is that if we don't remove some of this fat, we're not going to build up bark. So come in with your knife, trim it all out just like that. Once again, we're not using this section on the top, this triangular cut, because all of the protein strands stand straight up. So we want to make sure that we clean up anything around it though, because in here around the bone, we've got some blood pockets and we've got some veins, but we've also got an opportunity to get some really pretty chunks out of there. And that's, that's key. Sometimes they work really nicely to extrapolate them. As you can see, it's almost like a daisy. Like that's the center of the daisy and those are all the petals. And so there's some really nice muscles right around here towards the bottom that don't have that blood burst in there that actually can be taken out almost whole, okay? And then we have some other parts called the horn meat on this side here that once again are in between fat and bone. So basically imagine meat cooking inside of a lovely succulent pocket. That meat tends to be extremely tender and perfect for turn-in boxes. All right, we've trimmed out everything we need to trim out. We're done. So when it comes to making competition pork, we don't do this at home, okay? We actually use phosphate-based injections to hold moisture. Remember, this may sit on a judge's table for 15 to 20 minutes. We want to ensure, it's like meat insurance basically, that they get a succulent juicy bite every time. Now, I like to mix my injections, my phosphate-based injections. You can find them online, whatnot. Um, one of the key things for me is I like to mix them with fruit juices. So either peach nectar or pineapple juice or even apple juice. Now, in competition, we do not want to ever put in big pockets. Let me show you what not to do. So if you put the needle in and you go and pump up and pump up and pump up and pump up, what's going to happen is that it's going to build up a big pocket of juice in there. And the problem with that is that you are going to be steaming the center section. Basically, what your goal is to actually have tons of small, tiny injections, okay? You don't want steam piles occurring anywhere on this. So on your money muscle just a little bit you don't need a lot of this okay so as you can see i made what four five tiny injections that's all that money muscle needs 
the reason you don't want to add more, you could potentially split that muscle apart by actually adding too much moisture and then additionally steaming out the surface and removing the opportunity to build bark. Now on the rest of the butt, so that's the money muscle, we're done. That's all you need to inject it. Turn your butt up on its side. Now I'm going to inject each of these individual muscles. You can actually follow the fat lines and see where each of these little pockets are. Come in with your needle, go down, and as you are injecting it, pull it up so it actually saturates that whole little muscle. That's really important. We don't want to form those pockets. We want complete saturation, but we don't want it in just one area. So in each of those little muscle pockets, go in, and as you are pressing down, lift it up so that it saturates the whole section. There we go. All right, we've got a couple more sections to go. And now we're gonna flip it over, okay? We're actually gonna go through those two muscles behind the money muscle. We're gonna see if we can get some beautiful tubes out of that. And then there's one that runs the entire length. We're gonna go in there. And as we inject, we're gonna pull that needle out. Now there's a couple other little tiny spots that I like to take care of. Sometimes you can harvest beautiful little tubes. There's one right behind the money muscle right in there. And you want to turn your butt around and you want to do this entire triangle at the bottom and this section in here right next to that bone and when it's really full of injection you can see it'll start pushing the injection out and at that point step away your injecting is done you don't need to use a lot of it so once you have all your pork trimmed up and you've got it all loved up and injected, the next thing you gotta do is you gotta rub your butts. Of course, most people do not season their butts enough. Remember, this is a large cut of meat. We are gonna be smoking this for hours. Use enough rub. So here's what you should be thinking about. For each one of your pork butts, okay, after you've trimmed it, you should use approximately three quarters of a cup of rub, whatever your favorite is. just keep pouring. Now, once you've got a good amount on there, get in there. Get it in all those nooks and crannies and get it covered well. Now the injection should give you enough liquid to adhere that pork butt. And it adds a beautiful color to these. And it kind of starts up that mahogany goodness we're going to create with all that wood fired smoke. Now, as the rub sits on these butts, you'll notice that there's going to be a lot more moisture come to the surface. That means the salt in the rub is doing its job. And that's a good thing because you always want your butt to go to the grill cold and a little damp. Smoke is water soluble. And that's really important to understand that a damp butt going to the grill that's cold is going to attract more smoke than a dry butt. Here we go. Butts are ready. Go to the fridge overnight before you go to the grill. All done, except for cleanup and bourbon. Every world championship that I have accomplished has been done on a Traeger grill. And that's really important to note that that consistency along with skill set has facilitated that. I love oak, hickory, and cherry pellets. Those are my three go-tos basically in competition. So as you can see, we're going to be putting on these beautiful pork butts. There's the money muscle right there. So one on the top, money muscle about the center there. And then we've got two that are gonna go on the bottom. Once again, we're all about protecting that money muscle. So the money muscle always goes towards the center of the grill. Once again, last but, this is the biggest one. Money muscles facing each other on the center, on the bottom rack. So it's time to close the grill. And now the grill's been cold, the butts are cold. Time to turn it on 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Every 45 minutes to one hour, this is my tool of choice. Literally just spritzing them with apple juice. Gorgeous color, low and slow, 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Take a look at that sexy mahogany color off the grill. So our butts have been on for quite a while now and one of the key things that we do when we're prepping competition pork butt is we really want to monitor the temperature on those money muscles. It's really important. So we're looking for about 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's take a look. Here's our biggest money muscle and we're going to be just coming up to 155 now. 
and you can see we're at 153, 154. Hold it for a second, 155. So now it's time to get these off and get them wrapped. So it's time to take all these bad boys off. But take a look at this color. It's that deep, rich red mahogany, and that's what we're going after for competition pork butts. There's one, and there's two, and there's the big bad boy. Once again, all that delicious color all the way through. Mahogany goodness. Time to wrap these bad boys. It's time to build the slather that we're gonna put on all of these delicious pork butts. Now for home pork, we literally just dump it in. We don't care. However, for competition, we want an absolute smooth texture. So I get all my ingredients for the slather and I literally whisk them in a bowl. So we've got some brown sugar. You wanna break up any clumps. We've got some honey. Honey's great because it gives that stickiness. Get that drizzled in there. We've got something that a lot of people don't like, <laughs> MSG. Yeah, MSG, it's competition. It's all about getting that flavor popping. We've got some Traeger pork and poultry rub because we're gonna amp up the flavor. Remember, they're not eating a whole sandwich of competition pork. They're literally getting a bite and we need to make that big bite really big impact. Got a little bit of hot sauce going in here. That's gonna balance out all that sweetness. And the last thing uh, before the liquid, this is ghee. Now you can use, you know, margarine, you can use butter. I like ghee because all the milk solids are out of it. It's a little more nutty. All right, so those are the ingredients. Now we're gonna start whisking this. And I've got some apple juice. Um, we basically want to make sure that this is still kind of sticky, um, but not too runny because we really want it to adhere to the competition pork butts. So get all of this mixed up. And then once it kind of comes together like this, then go ahead and add in a little bit of apple juice at a time, um, depending on what your fat content is of, you know, your butter or your margarine or whatever. This may take a while. Okay. But you really don't want this runny. You want it to actually stick to the outside of the meat. Just a nice slather, get it all whisked up. It's basically a massive flavor bomb at this point. That's it, we are ready to go. All right, so we have our slather all made. Now it's time to take the money muscles off the pork butts. That's one of the biggest concentrations in a competition turn-in box is what that money muscle looks like. So here we have our beautiful, beautiful pork butt. Money Muscle hit 155 degrees, and now we wanna take it off of here. So we're gonna grab a sharp knife, just holding it very carefully, okay? Because you don't want it to split. Now, this is Money Muscle number one. So one of the things I like to do is I actually like to cut it so it's nice and even on the bottom here. Because I'm gonna be wrapping this with some of that delicious slather that we made, but I actually want it to sit straight up in the package. This is very important for me because we want it to actually cradle all that goodness over this money muscle. So once again, we're going to cut the money muscle off. We're going to pull it back right at that fat line, just like that. So three money muscles, three pork butts. Now it's time to get all of this slathered up. We want to completely coat this. And the reason is we're giving it a flavor bomb. Remember, this is competition pork. This is not home pork. So this is kind of like seasoning to the max, basically, okay? And you can see I'm carefully making sure that every tiny little bit gets some of this gorgeous, delicious flavor bomb. All right, there's one, and it's messy, okay? Let's do it again. There's lots of different techniques for doing money muscles. I just really like this one. All right, now once we've got all that slathered up, all sorts of goodness, you wanna give them a little spritz with some apple juice. Just a little moisture in that package to make everything good. Not a ton, as you can see. And now what we wanna do is we're actually gonna build a little package. Pull your sides up, okay? And carefully, very carefully, fold this over, nice and neat and take your hand in the inside and just kind of tent it a bit. Yeah, it's a little dirty, it's a little messy, but we basically want to form this wonderful little, almost like a barbecue oven within the grill itself, okay? Take that in there, pop it up. 
Well, you notice by putting my hand in there and raising that surface up, the foil actually isn't touching the tops of those money muscles. And for me, that's important because we want to maintain the integrity of that barbecue bark on the top. So flavor bomb package, heading to the grill. And then we're going to deal with the rest of the pork butts, get them slathered up, covered in foil, back to the grill, 275 degrees. And now it's all the waiting game. We're looking for a final temperature of between 202, anywhere up to 208 degrees. They got to be nice and probe tender. There we go. Competition pork butts on the grill. So here's the thing. There are so many states and you've got different pockets of judges in each of those. But I think what it comes down to is that if you just cook really good solid food and you don't offend anybody, you're going to have great results. You know, you've got to nail the tenderness. You've got to nail that wood fired goodness. So take a look. They're all done and ready to go. So what I like to do is I like to roll them in that liquid that was in there. Remember, we had the hot sauce in there mixed with the butter, mixed with the brown sugar, all that goodness. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna place it right in the middle of a piece of heavy duty food grade plastic wrap. That's important, it has to be food grade, okay? Nice heavy duty stuff. Now, once it's sitting here inside the plastic wrap, you wanna grab some of that barbecue sauce. We wanna coat these money mussels completely. And our hope is, is that some of that beautiful sauce will set into that lovely bark and give it another boost of flavor. Now to hold this, remember we're gonna hot hold this above 140 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really important for food safety. So you grab your plastic wrap and you're gonna wrap it right against that meat. So it's still quite hot. So it almost forms like a seal on it, okay? Wrap it up, as you can see, it's the steam's coming off of it. Really nice and tight. Okay, so it's a complete package. Nothing should come out of that package at all, okay? And then what you do, you grab your foil and you roll it up like a little sausage, okay? And here's another tip. The cut side on the money muscle should be facing up because you want all that sauce to envelop all the top where all that bark is, okay? So we've got two more to go. And there we go. We've got our three gorgeous money muscles already wrapped, ready to go. But there's one more step grab a towel. One that you don't care about though, okay? Just, just a warning. These are now designated barbecue towels, okay? Take your money muscles, pop them in the center, make sure you keep those cut sides up, which is really important, and you want to wrap them. Uh, you want to literally make a nice tight bundle to keep them super warm while they're in your cooler. Um, you also want to make sure you keep a nice clean cooler that is about the same size as your butts and your money muscles because they're all going to go in there together okay it's really important that your meat stays above 140 degrees okay put them aside and then let's get on to the butts now when it comes to doing competition pork butts one of the key things you got to remember is only concentrate on what you think is going to go in the box so each butt is going to be opened up just like this and then what i'm going to do first and foremost is i'm going to take the bone out carefully and you really want to make sure that you don't miss a piece anywhere there because some of those pieces that get tucked in right underneath that bone, as you can see, it's steaming out, are some of the best pieces for the box. So get rid of the bone. And then you're going to take a look at your pork butt. And this is where that center section, which is great for home use, is not used in turn-in boxes because all the protein strands stand up straight. So we're going to put that to the side. Nothing wrong with that meat. It's just not suitable for a competition turn-in box. Now you're looking at all of these lovely chunks, okay? So you see, I can just pull that whole chunk out of there. I'm gonna pull off any remnant fat, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take a look at this whole muscle, see if there's any dark patches. So I've got a little bit of a dark patch in there. I'm gonna pick any of those dark patches out, not attractive to the judges, okay? So we're just gonna pull that right out. And now I've got this beautiful big chunk I'm going to come over here to my holding pan. This is the one that's going to go in the cooler and I'm going to shellac up every piece. So just give it a light saucing all over of that competition sauce. Just like that. We've got beautiful bark. As you can see that delicious mahogany color in there and we're going to put it in our holding box. This is the section that's right behind the money muscle. So if you break it apart, you're going to notice that there's some really interesting tubes right there and they're on every single butt and i love putting in tube meat because basically they're sandwiched between two sections of fat i mean come on think about it if you've got things that are sandwiched for 12 hours of cooking between two pieces of fat you are going to get some succulent pork so you want to pull that tube right out of there 
remove any of that excess fat just like that take your fingers run it across the top gently get rid of those excess pieces of fat and you have got this like seriously succulent piece of tube meat going back to our brush giving that a little brush on and that goes into our package as well and you want to continue this on for all three pork butts absolutely glorious mahogany bark and if you go and you can see that fat line is right there and we're going to break it right at that fat line so it's this gorgeous beautiful big chunk of pork right and it's been surrounded by fat and surrounded by that bone so it's kind of like in its own little home on the pork butt and because of that that makes this one of my favorite pieces to turn in and we'll actually break it apart right before we turn it into the box now the judge can pick any piece in the box that they want to i'm trying to tell the judge where to bite so when it comes to competition barbecue i would practice just like i was at an actual competition but i would do it at home i'd invite some random friends over i'd get them to do taste tests we would do tenderness cards we do you know give me your assertion on what the flavor profile brought to you and the thing is is that that consistency that constant practice gets you in that vibe it's hard to do but if you're going to go out and you want to be a competitive barbecuer and you really want to be a competitive barbecuer then that's the level you need to take it at we have a lot of options i'm just cracking against those fat lines we got beautiful butt people, beautiful butt. That's it, we are done selecting all of our pork pieces. So after all that meat is done, we've got three money muscles that are amazing. We've got this beautiful chunkage here. Take your plastic wrap, lift it up. We've been holding it down with that. Cover it nice and tight because you're gonna make a nice hot package in there. So there it is with the plastic wrap all over it, nice and tight. All those pieces individually sauced. Take your foil. And just like with the money muscles, we wanna make sure that we've got everything nice and tight in there. So once you've got all your pieces in the foil, you wanna go back and you wanna grab another barbecue towel. Just like this and get it all coated up with this towel to protect it and keep it super, super warm. Okay, so we've got our two packages. We've got our pieces. I always put the money muscles on top because that's the number one priority. Now, the last thing you wanna do, you wanna get these into a cooler. So we have a cooler here. And what we wanna do is we wanna put all of our pork into this cooler. Why a cooler? Well, it acts as a hot box at this point. And this is gonna help us keep this meat super warm. So pieces in the bottom always money muscles on top so we want to just close this nicely up just like that and then one hour at least everything we have done from injecting seasoning smoking slathering all of that comes down to this moment and it's all about building that final turn in box the box basically gets determined by the butts okay so let's pull out some of our packages they've been resting for well over an hour now so we've got our money muscles they're always cut absolutely last we're gonna put them to the side and let's go in for our pieces. So they're all in this lovely towel. So they're nice and warm. Still smoking hot at this point. Barbecue towel, cooler, done. We're gonna open this package up. Now, here's a tip though. When you're prepping your turn-ins, you wanna make sure that everything stays nice and moist. So here is a tip take some sauce and it's going to get messy brush it on your cutting board so any piece that touches it and we're not talking about putting on like a river you literally just want to brush your cutting board with this because we're talking about making every bite flavorful and then the next thing i do is whatever rubs you're using powder them up and give them a little sprinkle on the cutting board just like that creating layers of flavor and all goodness so we're going through the final sorting now and you want to move fairly quickly. You don't want these pieces to get cold. So these are the pieces from our package here. So this is an absolute piece that's going in. I can tell just by the way it looks and feels that one there. You can take a look at that. It's beautiful. Okay. We're going to look for some other big bark pieces. Oh, there's that beauty right there. Going to add just a touch more sauce to the back side of this one. I'm going to break that with my thumbs. Pull it apart because it's so big i don't want a whole judge to get that i want them to split it up so we've got some beautiful bark pieces here 
beautiful bark pieces there. Now this one, because when I split it, it didn't have any more bark on it. I'm actually not gonna use this one now, okay? I want those pieces to have bark. Same thing with this one, I just pulled it off. Lots of flavor, but we wanna make sure that they have bark pieces on there. This meat is nice and succulent and tender and moist breaking this big, huge piece apart. And you don't wanna break those big pieces apart until the very last second. Remember, oxygen is the enemy of any barbecue box. We got some beautiful tubes here and some other bark pieces. And like I said, as you sort through, the texture of some of the meat might have changed. Like this one tightened up a little bit, so we're not gonna use that. I've got one more gorgeous, big, succulent piece of meat. Give it a little slather. We're gonna break this one apart again at the very last minute, just like we are right now. Lots and lots and lots of flavor. Tons of goodness hitting that box. Dressing them up just ever so slightly. So I've got massive chunks now. I've got some smaller pieces. I really don't need anything else over here. But once again, because we're trying to keep everything hot, what you wanna do is you wanna grab that piece of foil and before you cut your money muscles, move your pieces over and just cover this up a little bit, okay? Keep it warm while you prep the rest of your box, okay? Time to cut the money muscles. I like to lay them down on their side before I cut them, give it more stability on the cutting board. You know, always wanna make sure your knife is super sharp before you do this. Now, the first cut for me is always removing the end piece. Now, I know we all enjoy a good end piece, but an end piece in barbecue can maybe offend the judge because they you know, hit a crispy bit they don't like. Then, what you wanna do, you wanna cut these slices super evenly, okay? Be as OCD as possible about this. And make sure you cut all the way through. And take your time with this, but hurry up. Depending on your sanctioning body, you could either use six, seven, eight. So always check with your sanctioning body what they need for their turn-in boxes, whether you can use garnish or not. We did a simple lettuce box today for our boxes. Now, once I get down to that little end bit, once again, it goes to the side. Now, while you're waiting to build the rest of your box, always press your money muscle back together, okay? It'll stay warmer and much more moist. Once again, cutting off the end piece. It's a little tougher. But take a look at how gorgeous that is. Beautiful red mahogany slices. Three, four. We might actually get six out of this one. We are going to get six, which is great. Nice even number. All right. Let's take a look at how pretty that is. We've got a gorgeous smoke ring all the way around. And let's go after the last money muscle. So we've got tons. We've got so much meat for this turn in box that I'd be happy with. Let's keep going getting it all sliced up okay so it is time to box the pork so we always start in different directions i'm going to go to the corner today i'm going to lay down six slices all money muscle that are really pretty trimmed out gorgeous we have a ton of beautiful beautiful bark on each of those now this one really should be facing that way but i actually like the way it looks on this side better so i'm going to lay it down just like that now here's the thing here's the real dilemma today we have so much good money muscle that i'm actually going to pull these aside now because the texture and the color is so good i'm going to do a quick trim on a whole bunch of these pieces because I have such great money muscle, I've got so much of it, that I now have just established a whole bunch of absolutely Mac Daddy chunks that are pristine and cut, just like that. So I've cut off those lovely little bits, okay? We're gonna go, and we want the box to be somewhat symmetrical. So I'm gonna go in just like that with my pieces nice and clean a really clean box is always a good thing okay so we've got tons of money muscle in there okay i'm going to go back to our original pile of goodness here all those chunks that we pulled out we're going to make sure we have at least six beautiful chunks going in there i don't like that piece it's not tight not good enough for this one that doesn't have any bark we don't use that we've got some other beautiful little pieces in here getting all the best out of the box only. There's that tube. 
I'm going to cut the end of that off just to make it a little neater. Cut it in half to make it a little more defined. And then we're going to dab these with a little bit of sauce. And I'm just going to tuck them in the side corners. And that is going to be it. You know, every time the box changes, I get a kind of a general idea. But when you have this much great money muscle, you really want to use it in the box always. Um, that's a big thing for me. I mean, you know, I'm constantly going through. And if I can't decide on a piece of which one's more tender, I actually go like this. I close my eyes and I touch my meat and I figure out which one by feel is actually a little bit um, more tender. As you can see, I just dabbed it on my fingertips because I actually don't want a lot in there. I just want a little bit of pork just to give it a little flavor. I'm now just at the very last minute before I close this box and get this turned into the judges. This is when I would be doing some final seasoning. That one looks a little drier. Don't want to use that. So I'm going to swap in another piece right at the last second, just like that. And then I'm going to come back in here with some apple juice just to give it a little more glisten. Give it a little more flavor with the rub. And of course, this is just a basic box method. You, of course, would have your own, you know, combinations of rubs and sauces. But this, uh, you know, this basic method has worked pretty well for a few things. So now I've got a lovely little bunch of pork. I'm going to tuck it in the edge there, nice and neat. So we've got this beautiful succulent box that has just a tiny bit of pulled pork in the corners with amazing money muscle all the way through. Nice and clean box on a bit of an angle. I'm going to take a little bit of sauce at the last second. We're going to go through and we're going to brush those pieces of pork just ever so lightly. As you can see, it's very little amount of pork uh, juice um, from that barbecue sauce mixed up with a little of the pork juices that were on the cutting board and everything else. Nice and clean, nice and simple, nice and clean. And then right before you go to turn it in, I typically will always spritz with some warm or room temperature apple juice. You never want to put it in cold stuff. As you can see, we just changed the texture of all those surface bits. There we go. We've got a little bit of pull. We've got a whole bunch of money muscle. We've got a really simple, delicious box. One of the key things that I'm known for, and I'm very proud of this, is that I share my knowledge. I post recipes all the time because I think the more people that cook, the better we're all gonna be. I think that you should give back to your community as much as possible. Um, it's not always about the check. It is about making those connections and making the, you know, the whole world a better wood-filled, <laughs> wood-fired, barbecue-tasty place. Barbecue brings people together and we need more of that.